it's a privilege uh, to be here before you all. And I just give glory to the name of uh, my God and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Ajit Abraham. Some of you might have uh, talked to me, might have tossed our hands, uh, but it's all right. This is not my comfortable position. Uh, I have to say that and uh, you know, try many excuses not to be here. And even uh, nothing worked out. And the last option was that you know, I had too much workload on this weekend, which uh, God has moved away. <laughs> and on Wednesday, my wife was. I uh, have nothing left. And I said yesterday, there's only one more left. I, there's uh, some guest speaker comes up. And that's also left. Uh, I managed to check it. Uh, uh, whoever tried last week, what drink they have done with Sam. So I don't know what, what they have done. Anyway, uh, I've been meditating. Uh, from the book of Mark and Exodus. So when I meditated on the portion from Mark chapter 10, I turn to that uh, portion, Mark chapter 10. My topic for today is that uh, when I meditated this portion, I was asking the Lord, Lord, James and John and Peter, they tasted the uh, transfiguration on the mount, uh, they tasted the glory of Jesus, you know, in, in much more higher than the other disciples. And I, I, when I meditated, I uh, came across one point, they were asking, Lord, I wanted, we wanted to be close to you, to be closer to the Lord. But when I meditated on the portion, some of the questions that come into my mind was, what are the hindrances in my life that are keeping away from the Lord? Or what is it that um, hindering me to get closer to God? Shall we bow down, bow down before the Lord and ask the Lord to help each one of us? It's not maybe some of the things that I struggle or some of the things that I may be going, but let the Lord open to you also. What is that hindering each one of us here? That for us to get closer to God, what is that blocking us? Let the Spirit of God help us to overcome, and, you know, let the power of the Holy Spirit help each one of us to, you know, that hindrances be taken away and let us get closer to God one step today. Father, we commit before you, Lord. We bow down before thee. Without your help, Lord Master, Father God, we cannot come close to thee. Without holiness, no one will see God. That is your word, O Lord Master. Father God, you are a holy God. You never change us, O Lord Master. You are a promise keeping God, Lord Master, Father God. And you love each one of us here, Lord Master. Father God, we bow down before thee and ask your grace and mercy, Lord. And let your spirit, Father God, help all of us, Lord Master. In Jesus' name. Um, just
just a brief introduction about uh, before going to the topics. Uh, I raised up in a Syrian uh, Orthodox uh, church and family, and uh, in 1993, uh, while I was doing my engineering um, in the college, uh, I happened to attend a youth camp, and that, that's where I gave my life to Jesus, and uh, I decided to follow Jesus. And, since then, uh, I've been you know, walking, trying to closer uh, uh, walk with the Lord every day because when I, I used to meditate the Word of God even before I came to Christ. Because it was my desire to read the Word of God. For some reason, I learned from my grandfather because he used to read the Word of God and help you know, whoever visits our house. Uh, some, whenever he gets chances, some of the verses that he gets, you know, understood, he understood that he tried to explain to other So, whatever I saw from my grandpa, grandpa, I picked up and then, you know, I practiced in my life too. I finished reading the Bible four times before knowing my Lord Jesus personally. That didn't help much to get closer to God. Reading the Word of God is very important. I remember one of the bishop in Marthoma Church, he uh, says that you should not read the Word of God, but you should meditate. But, you know, once I came to know the Lord, that's when, you know, some of the elders uh, in the youth uh, camp, they helped me how to meditate the Word of God after reading. And that's when, you know, my life started changing and um, started getting closer to the Lord, even though I didn't know the Lord personally, but the Lord started helping me to know, uh, reveal more about the Lord and help, help me also understand who I am. And uh, to the topic, uh, I just want to start in the Old Testament. Yay! We see that, you know, Lord was dwelling in the tabernacle. But whereas when we come into the New Testament, where does God dwell? The tabernacle has changed and we have become the temple of God. And that's where God lives. And when I meditated uh, the book of Exodus chapter 33, Verses 13 to 17, 18. Can someone help me? Now therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know in your ways that I may know you, so that I may, I may find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Can you continue up to 18? Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, then I will lead us up from here. For how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us, so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have which you have spoken. For you have found favor in my sight, and I have heard you by my name, by, by name. Then Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. I need, uh, like I read the previous chapter also, so uh, we all know that you know Moses had talked to God face to face. But here he is asking show more of his glory. He wanted, you know, to get close to God. That is what Moses was asking. And when I meditated on the 
book of Mark chapter 10, you know, these two disciples, James and John, they were brothers. And Peter also had seen the glory of God. A bit of, you know, a taste of the Lord's glory. But James and John wanted more closer to God. That, that's what they were asking for. But the questions started coming in. What is that talking need to get close to God? Are we shortage of it? Like, am I getting not enough message or is the word of God not sufficient? Is the spirit of God that God has given not enough? But why is it that I'm not able to get close to God? What is that blocking me? We hear the messages after, you know, messages. And one of my recent emails and was telling me, like, if you go to message.com, we have, you know, plenty of messages. Or there are many sites and, you know, even, um, there is no shortage for the message. But that's not the problem. Where lies the problem then? It should be within us. God, Jesus said, my temple is called the house of prayer. But we lack, you know, there is no fear of God. But because of sin and all these, you know, we make the house of prayer as a den of thieves. For our own things we are making a lot of hindrances in our own life that we are not getting closer to God. This is what my personal experience when I meditated that the Lord has spoken to me. If God speak to you, may the Lord bless each and every one. But let's focus, you know, the first thing that I understood is there is no fear of God when there are, when there is no fear of God, we can be away from the Lord. Um, the sin can creep into our life and we can, you know, deceive other people also. Even when we commit sin, um, we can deceive others. We can come to church, we can, you know, uh, be in the family, but uh, we can't deceive others by doing, you know, the regular routine, the religious stuff. But that doesn't help us to get close to God. I just wanted to read Isaiah 59 2. But your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. It is our sins. It is our iniquities. The reason that, you know, God's face is hidden before us. The reason that our prayers are not answered or God is not listening. And we read in Romans 3 number 3, all have come short of the glory of the Lord. All have seen and fall short of the glory of the Lord. There is not one excluded from the list. Everyone. But we have accepted Jesus Christ to our life as Lord and Savior. We got baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's become a stagnant for, you know, the Christian beliefs. Many of the believers, we don't make much progress in our life. And if any time when the Lord, um, uh, the Spirit of God convinces us about a sin that we, uh, some issues that we are going through, we got to repent at that point and you know get right with God immediately quickly that's the you know there is no other way walk around to get right with God quickly because we got to set right with God as quickly as possible to get closer to God because if you don't re continue in sin uh, just uh, one other thought that came to my mind is God has shown a pattern of tabernacle to Moses to build on the earth. But if he, if he continue in a pattern of sin, that sin of pattern can overtake us. Rather than God's glory where dwells in the tabernacle, which need to overtake us in our temple, in our body. If 
feet. That is not overtaking us. God's presence is not overtaking us. Then the sin will overtake us. We got to fear God. How do we fear God? By knowing and seeking the Lord. By seeking and knowing the Lord. <coughs> Acts chapter 17. Uh, Paul says. Just a moment. chapter 17 verse to read even 26 and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grow for him and find him that he is not far from each one of us so wherever we live wherever we dwell, whether in US or India or Africa. The desire for the Lord is, you know, we get closer to the Lord. We find, seek Him and find Him. That is the, you know, the desire of God. And we, we also, you know, un unless we seek the Lord, we won't find. We need to seek after Him. Uh, even today morning I was uh, hearing one word, those who diligently seek, He is the rewarder. God is the rewarder. If we seek, God will show up. No doubt about that. Because that's my experience. Because, uh, like, even um, after coming to faith, we, um, like me and my wife, we struggle a lot of issues, uh, you know, and in to come into U.S., we both are qualified, but didn't get any job at all. We both are engineers and didn't get initially um, any job. And one of the pastor, you know, from Madras, uh, like he always uh, reminds me of one thing: like wherever you go, make sure the uh, you don't do much calculations. On your finances. <coughs> Trust in the Lord. Amen. When we, you know, think more about our worries and finance and all those things that can pull us down. So then, um, that's uh, just um, like uh, we try to. Uh, I try. I started working two jobs, and you know, that's slowly. Drifted, drifted me away, you know, to seeking the Lord. And because I don't have any time, and immediately after coming here, we got our daughter. And, uh, there's no time to sleep also. Walking to jobs and, you know, taking care of the child, and it's, it was getting so tough. And I quit both the jobs and started, you know, sitting for the Lord. And when I was doing two jobs. There was, you know, a lot of arguments uh, between me and my wife, and you know, we were not getting enough. But we decided, you know, like that I took a break, and you know, but even though I left the job, I with my enough uh, computer knowledge, I started working here and there, like, uh, helping other people and small offices and other things, setting up networking and all those. And that's the time, you know, I enjoy the most. Because when we, we didn't have enough money, we were able to even help other people. 
lend you know, some people who are working two jobs and both husband and wife were working. When they were in need, they were, they, for some reason they came and asked money and I had the money at that time to, you know, to give them. It's not, I'm not boasting that, you know. Uh, but, but the Lord will help us. If when we seek the Lord and when even when we are not enough, I remember actually uh, my pastor in the former church he, uh, used to share a lot from Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Can we quickly read that? A poor man. I just want um, one, one that and help me. A poor man helping with his wisdom, you know, winning a city. Thank you. Um, with, you know, even though this man is very poor, but with wisdom, God's wisdom, even when a, you know, a bad situation comes, he, with the wisdom of the Lord, he, it's, it's mentioned, um, Solomon has written, he wins the city. What are the reasons you know, that God has put in each places that we are living? We got to save the souls, right? But by walking away from the Lord, we are not reaching out, we are not getting closer to the Lord, and we are not winning the city. And, but we are hearing a lot of messages here and there, but a lot of things are in between happening. Another topic that comes into our mind is deception. The standard of truth has come down, or it has been lowered. The, the God standard, we, or you know, the man, or even some of the churches, has reduced the standard of God. Now, even the outside world, we see that they call good as bad, and bad is good. You know, we are, as parents, we are seeing in public school or private school, uh, children from the normal family uh, have become minorities. When I say, you know, like, we all know that, you know, divorce and homosexuality has become common outside. And slowly it's creeping in. Can we read uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16? Peter is quoting from Leviticus what God has given to Moses, you know, all the standards. Peter is quoting from Leviticus. God said, be ye holy as I am holy. What is the God standard? He is holy. What is the standard that God has set for us? Same standard. He has not reduced one step lower. But how is it possible? How can we be like God? Can we be God? But He is required. That is a requirement God is asking from us. We not to become God, but to be holy. It's not reducing any, you know, one step for anyone, not even for Mother Mary or um, Cornelius we heard last week. He was a God-fearing man, godly man, and his, all what he did reached up to heaven, but not excluded to repent from sin. But the deception that is, you know, the end time. Jesus has warned many times, even to the disciples. Matthew chapter 24, it says, many will leave the faith. 
would like to read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Can someone help me read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1? When, when, the, when we don't get closer to God and when we don't fear God, when we live in sin, it is an easy target for the Satan to deceive you. Any, any particular person who live, you know, walking away from the Lord, living in sin, who has no fear, he is an easy target, no doubt. Devil doesn't need to target, you know, the unbelievers. Who has to go away from faith? Those who are in faith. If we are in faith, we got to be careful. We need to be alert. We need to be watchful. Jesus said, we got to be pray. And all the disciples, just before, you know, Jesus going on to the Calvary, Jesus was asking, do you have one hour? Can you spend one hour with me? But these are the times, you know, we are working too much, extra workload, additional jobs, too much responsibility. We are taking but no time for the Lord. We don't seek the Lord and don't find it. That is drifting us away. And it is an easy target when we, you know, are walking away and committing sin. When the pattern of sin is in our life, we are an easy target for the Satan. And the next topic is finance. My um, daughter was asking me recently when we were in meditation. Is it wrong for Christians to be rich? I said, certainly not. Uh, there's nothing wrong. <coughs> we got to make sure our intention is right. We got to deal the you know the finance appropriately. As please, as it pleases to the Lord. Does it please to the Lord? Finance is one odd topic that you know can deceive us. Jesus also said, "You cannot serve God and wealth. If you are rich, then there is you know a trap coming there." Um, that's in. First Timothy 6 10 it says love of money is the root of all evil. Many times we go after what we want rather than what our need is. Just wanted to explain that. Our want is our need is you know something we got to have. That is our necessity. But our want is, you know something that I like to have, what is not needed. So many times we go after what we want, which are not needed. We are you know, living in the US, a place where milk and honey is overflowing compared to other countries. But times are coming, you know. We should not get deceived by living here. I remember like, you know, meditating in the book of Exodus. God has led the people of Israelites through the Red Sea and, you know, they were, they started celebrating victory songs and every, everything, you know, in two weeks time, they started murmuring, only two weeks after that. But this, there was one lady who was a harlot sitting on the other side. 
of the promised land. Just she feared God. I would like to read that portion in Joshua chapter 2. This is uh, Joshua chapter 2, verses uh, 15. I'm going to read that. So they went and came to a house of Harlot named Rahab. It's uh, the second portion of chapter, uh, verse 1. And lodged there. And, I, it told, and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And it happened as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out. Where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly, for you may overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them with the stacks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. Then the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan, to the Ports. And as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know this is what we should focus. I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord tried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. I, all, I always got puzzled, you know, this lady sitting at the promised land, and her life, you know, is. Um, very mess. But she feared the Lord and you know that is and helped these Israelites who came there. She feared the Lord. And all the Israelites who have you know passed the Red Sea except Joshua and Caleb, they didn't reach the promised land. In, when we come to the New Testament, we have, you know, more, we are more privileged by blessed with the Holy Spirit. We have, you know, Joshua didn't have all the, you know, the full Bible. He only had five books. But we have, you know, all the, you know, the Word of God before us. But do we take this privilege for granted? Or are we using this privilege, you know, to get closer to God, to know more of God, to seek Him? Are we finding the Lord in our life? Is our life an hindrance for myself or my family to get close to the, to the Lord? Or am I an hindrance even to my church members or even to the people outside to know the Lord. Am I an hindrance? These are the questions that has, you know, when I started meditating on the question, some questions, uh, you know, came to my mind. Am I an hindrance? 
to myself? Mommy. Do I fear the Lord? Is there any sin in my life? And when I was dealing with my children, you know, um, especially with the music, they started, you know, singing some songs and playing guitar and and recently some of the songs I happen to hear some of the songs I can not even get one word of but it's coming through Christian channels and both my kids started singing the same song I couldn't even, even my our own children singing the song I couldn't even get one word and when I looked at the lyrics, morning of Jesus mentioned, God is not mentioning the lyrics. And the songs have hit the top of the list in iTunes or you know, you know, you know, when, when the and, and recent survey is showing that you know, the Christian singers are coming on top. How are they coming on top? They found that they are not using the name of Christ or Jesus. They are coming on top. And I try to discourage, uh, you know, about my children. Whenever the song comes, I try to flip the channel. I try to discourage more often, but you know, they still want to cling on to the, you know, some of the songs that they were singing. I try to explain, but they won't understand unless they get closer. It's not, you know, I cannot push them to get closer to the Lord, but only I can pray that they will understand, they will know. But I don't know how, you know, it's not in which I don't know what I am facing to the church also, you know, the young, young people. And it's not just the young people, it's, you know, the media is, you know, another great tool to receive the people. Internet, computers, tablets, iPhone, you know, we are hooked up to the cable where the major chunk of, you know, chunk deception is coming through. We don't watch TV at uh, our house, but, you know, we have internet computers in a couple of other places, but we make sure it, it is, you know, watched by everybody else. We can use it, but it is used where, uh, where we all sit together. So that's, that's one thing we do. We make sure you know, the children are not going between other sides. And, you know, they are not deceived or by... It's, it's very easy because you know, when, when you go to the internet, it's one easy track. You know, it's, I, don't, I don't need to explain much on that. But my advice to the youngsters and adults, anytime when you use the internet or computer, make sure use it, you know, for somebody else. Even nowadays, uh, tablets and iPhone and everything is given to the small children to play games or whatever is coming in there. Uh, Tom, my son also was playing a game, you know, which I allowed him to play, but then immediately another one advertisement is coming. It's, it's an easy target for the children. We may not be knowing, we may be you know, taking the rest, but we got to be careful when we are giving these tools to our children. They shouldn't be get trapped. It's an easy target. The media cable is an easy target for you know, deceiving our family members. We might think, you know, that is helping our children because in the past we used to allow them to watch TVs, but now TV is gone. But 
other technologies as replacing. But dear brothers and sisters, uh, this is the bottom line. We have to fear the Lord. If there is any hindrances in our life, that Lord is showing. Let the power, power of God, the Holy Spirit, come upon us and help us. Convince us to overcome. And let us seek diligently. That the, there is a reward that the Lord is there waiting for us. Let the Lord help each one of us. Amazing, Thank you.